Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and today is Tuesday, November 15th, 2016, and I wanted to do an update on the trade ideas. We'll start, uh, in this video, we'll update the short trade ideas, and uh, before I get into that, I wanted to make mention that uh, if you're a you know member of the site and you have access to the trade ideas, you come in here on the top menu, you can sort them by category, uh, as you know, any there's a description of each category down below. And if you're looking as we are now, this is the active trades short. So any short trade idea that is currently active, meaning it's triggered an entry or it was added directly as a, an objective entry at the time. Um, but what I wanted to mention is uh, I've always strived for accountability on this site. That's why every single post has, is archived and definitely I've never deleted or edited or modified any posts other than to fix typographical or grammatical errors, which are common. I post, get them out as quick as possible, and then proof them if and when I get the time. So uh, on that, trade ideas, win or lose, never disappear. They are always, they stay in the category, even if they've hit their price target, until I get around to posting an update on the front page, stating that that trade has either exceeded its maximum suggested stop or hit its final price target. Or if I decide to pull the trade early, there's an update, at which point I have to come in and recategorize the trade. And it will then move, be moved over to these uh, completed trade ideas. They're completed by categories, swing trades on the long side, short side, which are these these over here, uh, long-term trade and the growth and income trades. Okay, so uh, I will have these updated uh, as soon as possible. And uh, until then, I, I'll go over each one, even those that have already hit a target have been stopped out. Starting, I'll go in order here. And just uh, one other additional note, when you come in through this portal, if you come into the trade ideas category and click and come into a category like the short trade ideas, and then I, you click on any trade that you're interested in. Let's say here it was MO, the old uh, Philip Morris Alt Altria group now. That will bring up, it will call up all posts. If I click on this symbol tag right here, let's just go ahead and do that. It will call up all posts associated only with that particular trade. Uh, over the years, I may have posted dozens of, of posts and trade ideas on Altria group. And it, it, to view those, you just use a symbol tag, uh, select tag box, type in MO. You see, if you do it quick enough, it'll jump down to the uh, ticker symbol. And then you click that. And that will then call up all posts. As you can see, it's been a trade in the past, uh, different trades. All right, so let's, let's go ahead and cover the active short trades today. And I'm just going to move this to a different monitor over here. And now we're looking at uh, the first one. We'll go in order. Activision. Uh, still a beautiful looking chart. And uh, you'll notice in a lot of these trades, a common theme is that, first of all, that, that all these trades don't always pan out. N nobody, there's not a trader out there with 100% success rate. That's, that's all part of trading. Just like nobody bats 1,000 in baseball. Um, but for the most part, what you'll notice is a lot of these trades, despite the markets, various indices like the small caps pushing to new highs now, um, the Dow recently making new highs and some other things, uh, these trades are playing out because, as I often say, I like to trade individual stocks over the markets. I have just recently, for the first time in months, many months, added both QQQ and then more recently IWM is official short trades because I know a lot of you do like to trade the broad market ETFs for the liquidity and relative safety. You don't worry about an earnings beat or miss, um, which is one of the trades I'll get into here in a second uh, that uh, was smoked on an earnings the other day. But uh, this is Activision, and again, this chart speaks volumes. This is where one of those cases, um, some rising wedges, you get a back test after a breakdown, and some, and this one you can see in particular, this stock has a history of uh, sharp sell-offs after clean, bearish rising wedge breaks. So that's what we shorted here. Uh, the trade has already hit uh, the first target a while ago. I believe an, an update was already posted there. And um, I don't see anything in the charts that tells me this trade isn't going to go on to to play out and for, you know, quite possibly move to the final target. 
Um, I always say the charts are dynamic and so is my tr trading plan, meaning if they change, maybe I call this one early, maybe I decide to close this one officially or personally or both. They, they, they sometimes are mutually exclusive. Uh, close that at T2. If that, that's the case, I'll let you know. So what from here now, we're, we're quite extended. We haven't really had a counter trend rally yet, anything significant. And remember, broken support is, becomes resistance. So this is resistance up here. We Maybe we pop back up. The target was at 39.80, while the actual um, support level was at 39.29, give or take. So call it 39.30. Uh, so maybe a push up to that level would offer an objective entry. I also see a gap up here that you can't rule out. Maybe a bounce back to that area. But uh, again, MACD is in bearish territory and just uh, the charts playing out as expected. And as you can see, when you look at a weekly chart, this is why I really like this one. Uh, at minimum, I'm expecting a revisit of this downtrend line here. I talked about that in the past. And, um, you know, you can see that Activision has a history. You see these rising wedge breaks or these tops. There was a fir the first drop, a nearly straight down 27% drop. Last time we had a, a sharp correction was right here, and it fell even more than 27%. And uh, you can see here, this one's just getting going. And, uh, you know, a drop from the breakdown of this rising wedge would be comparable to this wedge if we hit that trend line there. That's just a measuring tool. I'm just measuring out the the distance there. So, all right, it looks good. And, again, you have to define your trading style. If you wanted to book profits at first one, uh, T1, you would have already done that. And um, you can always recycle back in. Um, but I think I give you the levels where to where to add on if we get that opportunity if you're looking to do so. Uh, a V G O Broadcom. This one's taken a little while to pan out, but it's still, still certainly, um, uh, you know, working out the way we thought it would. Okay, on this one, we we shorted it on this wedge break right after here, uh, and I'm looking at the other screen now. That entry was a uh, cross below 174.69, so somewhere right around here, uh, a little lower. Uh, a little higher than that. All right, I'm just going to grow. Okay, there's 175. That's a little high, but this is, uh, you can see that this one's so far fallen about 6%, give it or take. So it's profitable, uh, well above the stop. I think the stop, I'm looking now on the other screen, uh, stop above 186. So we're well, well above, uh, or well below that stop, I should say. And uh, just recently, what I like about this one, it's broken down below and back tested this trend line as well as this horizontal support level, that horizontal line. So you have it below dual support levels, which is a good sign uh, if you're short, not a good sign if you're long. You can see how well this trend line, it goes back. I had to jump to a two-day period chart to go back four years. Uh, pretty well-defined trend line. So you can zoom in again. You can see that we're above that that level. So there's a additional confirmation that this one's playing out as expected. This is one of the semiconductors. I know that's, that's been a frustrating trade for some because as a group, the semis haven't really gone anywhere. Uh, just today coming matching their, their uh, you know, the recent highs. Um, but uh, the individual semi-trades, particularly the individual semi-trades, are playing out pretty nice, and this is one of those. Again, I love to keep the weekly charts in mind and uh, on Broadcom. This is, you know, as I mentioned, if you're, if you're in this for the long haul, a trend trader or a long-term swing trader, this is just a beautiful chart pattern to me, a nice, well-defined uptrend line, clean, divergent high, bearish rising wedge pattern. You can see it down here on the PPO. You can see what happened. All these arrows show the divergent highs before, the corrections that might not look like much, but when I measured out here, there was about a 30% drop from this divergent high to the lows. That's about 31% drop, and I certainly don't see any reason why. This is a much bigger, larger pattern. There's a 30% drop down to my minimum target. So that would be in line with these previous divergent highs. And this is a much larger, much more powerful divergent high. So again, my expectation, and I know, you know, Pierce, you know, some might be losing faith. I see a big, big swoon down coming in the uh, tech stocks and in the market. And it's going to be very profitable if it comes. And, you know, if it doesn't, I'll get over there. This is why we have stops. We, um... You know, if it doesn't uh, pan out this time, then we get stopped out and we, we keep trading the best, uh, the most attractive sectors, long and short, and there's money to be made anywhere. But I can tell you right now, these semis are still, I get a lot of questions put to them, uh, put to me, and I still very much like this sector. And I think that uh, Broadcom, given enough time, you give it a few months, uh, can easily drop 40%. And the good thing is, just be ready, guys, even if you're, if you're a little 
burned out in this market because it is chopping around, seems to go down a little, goes up. It's really both long and shorts are frustrated. Keep in mind that um, stocks fall much faster than they rise. So if and when this one starts to pan out, all of a sudden you'll see the momentum accelerate to the downside. And personally, I would rather be in these uh, caught sideways and in, in, in what you call might call a dead money trade for a while. Again, this one is profitable. And so far it's playing out. And it's especially nice to see these individual semis playing out despite the sector sort of holding up. Although I think from a technical perspective, the bearish, uh, the sector still looks bearish. Um, all right, let's, let's get away from, from this one and go on to the next one, but, uh, just want to, uh, it looks good. Sorry. And before I leave it, actually, as I started to get away from it, I noticed this little wedge type pattern here you can draw. I just added this and, and that's where we had a break and it put us below that, that bigger uptrend line. Okay. Moving on to the next one. And this is ISRG, another good example of security selection. This one already has hit and exceeded the first target by a fair margin. We have this uh, trend. I, I added this just today looking at the chart. What what I notice, if you look at this line to, from the highs down to that recent move, this looks like a bull flag pattern here. You can see this flagging type action. And then if you take the flagpole, which is a move from the highs down to the bottom of the flag, you add it to the top of the flag that gives you the measured move. So it is a bit concerning because that one looks like it played out to the measured move, which reversed just shy of my first target and uh, had a pretty strong day today. Um, however, that that's not shaking my faith. I'm still short this one. I didn't book any profits at T1. I'm, I'm holding out. Uh, uh, ideally, at this point in time, I'm open to a move down to T3. But uh, I do have uh, still a high degree of confidence that at least T2 will be hitting this one. Uh, you do have uh, resistance now overhead, that former T1 target. Uh, let me move the line over here so you can see the pop-up box. That resistance is at about 247.23. I'm sorry, 647. I was looking at the wrong number. 647.23, so call it maybe 648 or so resistance there. And then there's some resistance above. Um, and you just have to sometimes ride out these counter trend rips. But this this level looks like a magnet to me down here, this T2 level. And again, let's look at the weekly chart on this one. You can see the, the that previous reaction high going back from early 2012. Uh, I think that's a good chance that gets hit. And then quite possibly this uptrend line. So um, again, it all depends on your trading style, whether you want to uh, tighten stops at this point or give it a little room all the way back up. I haven't lowered the official stops on this one yet, but that's up to you if you want to do so. That's ISRG. Uh, as of now, looking good. Like I said, a little concerned that it, it seems to have played out to that flag pattern. I didn't catch that before. Had I seen, seen that in advance, this flagging action, uh, I might have revised my target upwards a little bit to try to come in closer in line to the projected flag uh, measurement on that pattern. IWM seems to be a lot of interest in this one. This is one of the two official trade ideas on the broad markets. Uh, again, the first two that I've done in, in months um, because of the fact the markets have just grinded around sideways. And as I often say, when you short the broad markets or a broad index, you're shorting the good and the bad. Um, and if you go long, you're, you're going long the good and the bad just as well. So, uh, But with that being said, there's relative diversity in, in, in shorting or going long an index, and there's a lot of liquidity in this. So traders can either trade the E-minis, you know, the Russell E-minis. You can trade IWM or any of the leveraged ETFs. And uh, there's just not much to say. I've already shared my thoughts today in a post on the front page on IWM and this crazy rip and what's fueling it and how I don't, uh, I'm not a believer in this. And uh, even if the fact that we took out these 2015 highs by just the slightest margin, I'm talking, this, this was the previous all-time high in the, in the uh, IWM uh, right up there somewhere. And we took it out or closed right on it, give or take, for, you know, statistically we're on that high right now, whether we're a few basis points above or below. But, um, I've, I've said this before, and I made a point today, to, to see, to use so much energy to this near vertical rip just to get to a breakout level, from my experience, you don't keep going. At that point, you're going to see at best, even if prices pop up briefly and come back in, um, they'll, it'll, this one will need to consolidate and digest these gains. And I don't see that happening. I don't see it priced into the charts. 
I see a move back down, a failure. Whether we take out, I'll stick right now. I'm sticking with these stops on a close above 130.90. So we're still, um, I don't want to say comfortably above that level. You know, we're just another good day or two uh, uh, above there. Um, but, uh, and if that one, you know, if anything changes, I'll let you know. But as of now, let's just stick with that stop, 130.90. But uh, I have, I have, I have, I have a fair degree of confidence we're not going to take that stop out and this thing is going to collapse under its own weight soon after this uh, ridiculous Trump pump fades. All right, uh, next one up is MO. That is Altria Group. And uh, this one, this is a good example of, of being patient. Um, you know, if you're a swing trader, a swing trader, typically our trades, you know, as a swing trader, they can range from days to weeks to months. But I, I like to say on average for, for anywhere from a few weeks to a few months for a typical swing trade. Now, what has happened with uh, Altria? Let's take a look here. We shorted that one back on, uh, I'm going to have to pull on the other screen. Let me pull up the uh, the notes. Okay, that one was shorted back on the setup was posted in on August 5th, waiting for a break below 6605, which we would have had right somewhere over here, 6605. Yeah, so we, we triggered somewhere in there. Let's just say on a breakdown of that wedge to move this line. So this one has played out now for... Uh, we almost hit the first target. This is what I wanted to get at. And we had a heck of a reversal, well below the stop. This stop would have been a minimal loss anyways, anyways of just a couple percentage points, not a big loss. And it is frustrating to see a swing trade come so close to a target, then reverse, and yet now we've come back down to where we were. And I still have the, you know, a high degree of confidence that at least this first target, if not the second target, and I do favor the second target. I plan to hold out for the second target. Uh, I think that'll be hit. Uh, so here's my point where I'm going with this is, you know, you need to have a little patience and just, you know, stick with your trading plan. If you short a stock when you have a couple percent downside risk, if wrong, um, you know, and your risk reward is favorable, you know, this one has, and I'm just rough estimating using the the uh, drawing tool or the measuring tool here about a 15 percent downside um so now it's taken from the point of entry about three months if you look at the box to the left uh, the time says about 2.9 or three months there and so far we're up on that trade by about uh, roughly eight percent drop so now let's put that in perspective three months that's a quarter um, there's four quarters in a year. Each quarter is three months. So if we multiply 8%, or I'm rounding off again, we're down we're up on this trade, profitable by almost 8%. Eight times four is 24. So uh, we have, I'm sorry, eight times, yeah, eight times four is 32. So we have 32% uh, annualized gain uh, right now on this trade. That's the way you have to look at it. Uh, so as frustrating it is, as it is to have ridden out this bump coming back to near break even, you're still blowing away any expected return, any any return in the stock market, um, anything it's done in the last year, last couple of years, anything it's most likely to do, and that is swing trading. So you give these things a little room. Sometimes they hit our targets right away in short order. Sometimes they bounce. Um, sometimes we get taken out, but more often than not, you'll see these trades pan out to hit their profit targets within usually just a few months, especially on a typical swing trade. Uh, so it's all about patience. And there's the big picture of Altria. I've mentioned uh, most most importantly focusing on this wedge. This is what I refer to as a wedge overthrow or an overshoot, which t tends to come on a bearish rising wedge. You have a overthrow of the wedge and then a quick move down back below the wedge, and that's what happened here. Move down, breakdown of the wedge, back test, and rolling over. And um, I know, I know, guys, this is a defensive issue stock. These are dividend-paying stocks. You don't short these. Again, that's why you can use a higher uh, than an average position size. There's very little risk in these um, for a big gap up. You're not going to see Altria gap up and blast up 30% in a day, nor are you going to see it drop 30% in a day. Anything's possible, but very doubtful. So there's it's that support now. And over time, I think this one still has at least that much more. I'm looking at, you know, based off this weekly chart, you know, another 8%. And quite possibly if things get ugly and we do enter a new bear market heading into 2017, there's still from this point another 22, 23% downside, which more than dwarfs the dividend, which is 4% a year. Um, so 
Uh, again, very bearish chart, both daily and weekly. Here's NVIDIA. This one was stopped out. I posted an update on the morning before, actually an update in the trading room the night they, they came out with earnings, beat expectations, and then they were due to gap up. So I shared my strategy on the gap, and that one took us out, and I'll have to calculate the loss. I haven't saved a chart yet on this. I did add this line. If I know some of you mentioned holding on. Uh, it was up really big that day. And if you gave it a little more room, this is now an ascending price channel. The red line, which I believe is the same uptrend line I had, and then I drew this line. It comes in really nice. It's so you have a parallel price channel, and prices have pretty much tagged the top of that channel, which is resistance. And since that day, the gap up, prices have failed to take out the high so far. So you watch this one. I don't you know, it's a little too much, a little too fast. Um, MACD, I'd actually do better with a PPO on here. If you put a PPO, anything with a strong price move on the chart, you know, this one, when I say strong price move, just since uh, February or so, this one has gained 260%. That's where a PPO works better than a MACD. And uh, you can see here negative divergence on the PPO right now. Needs The stock needs to turn down to confirm that divergence. And we also have negative divergence on the R, uh, RSI. So uh, most certainly, if you gave this one a little rope or if you shorted it on that big gap up, um, you know, you can put a stop not too far above the high there or maybe a little on uh, the up above this channel if it wants one more tag of the upper part of the channel. And it's got a big... A lot of a lot of air underneath, big gap to backfill. Come back into that seventy-one dollar level would be my bet. So that's a drop from eighty-six to seventy-one. That's an out seventeen and a half percent. But officially, that trade is stopped out. And as soon as I post an update on the front page, it'll be moved to the uh, completed trades. QQQ. This one has just been. I don't want to call it my nemesis lately. So far, we've you know I've had uh, I've had its number here uh, on this official trade idea. Um, you know, rarely, and I don't think I've, can't recall, maybe in the past couple times on the site, officially suspending a stop on a trade. And that's what I did that day. They tried, they, they, they attempted a stop raid here. And there's that stick. It's even more pronounced as a bearish engulfing candlestick on the NDX, the actual index itself, where you can see the, the entire body of the candlestick engulfing the previous couple of days trading action. And um, as I mentioned, the 116 level is a key level. We keep dancing around that level. We closed a little bit above it, but you're talking 22 cents on a on a $116 share price. That's statistically insignificant. So that's really roughly a close on 116. And we're still well below that bearish engulfing candlestick. As I mentioned on the site today, if and when the queues manage to move above that and, and take out that bearish engulfing candlestick, move above it, well, it will have cleared our stop by that point, and I'm not going to let it go. This That stop remains, 117.50, a daily close. Um, but as of now, it looks good, and I know it's frustrating that the queues seem to want to start going down and then and come back up. Uh, and again, we're still, the bottom line is, whether you're bullish or bearish, nobody can declare victory because we're just stuck in this this multi-month sideways trading range with the market grinding around and um, but I see everything in the charts that tell me that this sucker's heading lower maybe they're going to hold it up into OPEX this Friday like they like to do ramp it into the OPEX but uh, trend indicators you can see the MACD signal line PPO like I like to see down below zero yeah, trend is bullet bearish we had a divergent high, everything I like to see. So there's nothing in here that I see that has concerned me about QQQ. And yes, that includes this recent crazy post-election market action. Uh, that's just noise in my book. Until these levels and this bearish, all this, the bearish technicals in the chart are undone or taken out, uh, I still like this trade and I still think it'll work out. And if it doesn't, that's what stops are for. All right, here's Starbucks. Uh, not my favorite anymore. This one did give us a little whipsaw signal. The the short was somewhere under here, under that 5272 level. I can't remember exactly. I'll reference the notes, but it's since set up. There's sort of a bullish falling wedge, or at least some divergence in place here. There was bullish divergence. I probably draw it better. You can see it here, like this. You know, with this line right here, price is making a lower low, really. This ascending or descending price channel. See the bullish divergence on the MACD, little divergence there. So that one so far has that proved to be a false breakdown. And my point is, I wouldn't short this one if you're not already short. Uh, I'll leave the the trade on because, as I said, you have a trading plan. 
I don't see anything compelling enough in the charts to pull this trade yet. Uh, stop remains above, I believe it's any move over one uh, over 55.62. And um, well, that's Starbucks. So it's still in play. We're at a slight loss on that. So that's one of the few. The rest of the trades, I think all the other ones I covered so far were profitable on, which again says a lot uh, for security selection because here we are to market pushing at new highs and most of the short trades are doing well handsomely profitable at this point semis a little frustrating uh, stop remains above 70 50 uh, but uh, they're knocking on resistance you can see here this horizontal line there was support back here the resistance here uh, and uh, I think I did an update on this one the other day in the trading room or front page you have this this trading range here right here this sideways trading range and I think the next big pop down below there will will trigger a sharp sell off down to the 62 64 level first target okay and uh and i do favor at this point in time i think uh, i still think a move down to the third target at 60 35 at minimum is likely I just again a beautiful chart pattern divergent top i've covered this one ad nauseum so i won't get into it a lot more i just want to let you know it looks good even though it's been frustrating for those that shorted just smh or any one of the etfs but uh longer term it still looks good i don't have anything marked up on this this weekly chart on this board. Let's jump on to the next one and uh, wrap this up. Strux, uh, TSM. Okay, here's another semi. We already went over a couple. Uh, playing out as expected. Divergent high, uh, well below the stops, uh, and it's tr below this S1, which is first support level. You can see this nice support line. There's some gaps in there, uh, reactions, and we're right above or right below that level. So this one in, in technically looks good. It's broken down below support. That opens the door for move down here to this first target at 28.23, and then uh, move down to that uh, second target level 26.76. Keep in mind there is this potential uptrend line in play here that may or may not come into play, but I'll leave this as of now. I'll leave that uh, T2 as the final target at 26.76, which will be a good move. I not looking to see exactly I don't see where we shorted I'd have to pull the notes but that's probably was on a I imagine I might actually shorted this one ahead of the breakdown but even even if you look at just the breakdown point that's still about a 13 14 percent drop so it's a pretty nice trade if it plays out WB this one did hit the target yesterday I screenshot it yesterday before after the close and I just haven't got around to putting updates on these trade ideas. And again, that's why I'm doing this video for you guys interested. Uh, T2, 42.25 hit. And I, I'll have to pull and see where I shorted that one exactly, the official entry price. But that's, you know, from the breakdown, that's about a 15% or so gain. And uh, so far, you know, hit the first target. We had a little reaction. Hit the second target, little reaction today, which is to be expected. And, you know, the f former first target or the support line that it was at then becomes resistance. And uh, uh, MACD is in bearish territory. It's still pointing lower, so I don't see anything that concerns me on this trade. And it looks really thin. I don't have uh, the volume at price histogram is turned tuned down here. Let me tune it back up a little, meaning brighten it up. Nope, wrong one. Uh, where is it? Volume at price. This one here. Edit. And there you go. All right. So you can see if we drop, you look at these long bars that line up with that second uh, target level that we just hit. And then it gets pretty thin down below there. And, you know, if things get really ugly, uh, this is where I see this one going in time because it's pretty thin down there. And it's uh, that, you know, so you're talking a potential move down from where we're at now, another 50% drop or so. And, uh, yeah, there's whole, not a whole lot of support on the weekly chart uh, down until that level. So first things first, we'll just leave T3 as a final target. If anything changes, uh, I'll let you know. And that was WB, a couple more, WFC. This one stopped out. This was a short trade with this crazy pop in the financials. Uh, stop was on a daily close above 51.58, which we got yesterday and again today. So that one stopped out, took a shot on an overbought at resistance play. It didn't work out, so I'll have to calculate the gains and tell you what the total loss, but I think it was relatively small uh, in percentage terms on that one. And the final one, Yahoo, another one's playing out well. Bearish rising wedge, very clean bearish rising wedge. So orange support line that was broken, back tested. Prices moved down, taken out, have taken out the second support level. Almost hit the first target uh, yesterday. 
you can see there that candlestick uh, first targets at 38 13 and that low was 38.87 so close but not there yet and um, you know I expect if we get there a reaction there's some decent support uh, but ultimately I think that one goes down here to 35.85 all right that's it for the trade ideas updated all of them which uh, includes a couple that were stopped out as well as a couple that have hit a price target and need to be updated and if you guys have any questions, there's still, for every one official trade idea, I probably put five or more or ten or more unofficial trade ideas out there. Uh, I'll try to get to the longs. I'll try to do another update on the marijuana stocks. I know there's a lot of interest. They have been doing well lately. We had that initial post-election sell-off, and a lot of them already pulled back to those support levels and have, uh, have rallied off of there. And I'll try to get to those soon. But uh, as always, if you guys want an update on a trade idea, just drop me a line and I'll be glad to uh, give you my thoughts and words or accompany it with a chart if I get the time. This has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Hope you enjoyed.